the Dice Tower, the ultimate accessory for the gamer that already has everything. What's a Dice Tower? It is a small structure such as this one with an opening on top. You toss dice in it. The tower has some platforms inside. The dice roll and fall and bump into each other and they come out of here where they become visible. It is a simple structure to optimize randomization when you're rolling dice. One of the main uses, ideas, I guess, is to prevent people from cheating. You can just put down the dice in a configuration that you like if you toss them here, but I don't think that many, many gamers would try to pull that stunt. But another use is that, well, I have big hands, but other gamers may not. And if you have smaller hands and you have a lot of dice that you're trying to roll, maybe um, you do not have enough room or a lot of room in your hand to actually move and shake the dice around. Then you dump them in here and that's another useful use. But one of the most important aspects for me is that the dice towers prevent the dice from going all over the place, knocking down components, falling from the table. And once they fall uh, off the table, then they start running. They manage to hide under carpets, to enter people's backpacks. I found dice in the most incredible places after they fell off the table. I have almost to believe that there's something supernatural about it, the secret life of the falling dice. So, ha ha, but the dice tower prevents all that. And that's really something that I like. But let's face it, what is the secret, most important, most key use of the dice tower? to uh, increase the fun of rolling dice. You're gonna roll dice so many times in, in many games, it is just more fun when you're dumping them in there and you see the, you hear the rattling noise, it creates a moment of suspense as you do not know yet what's coming out, then the dice are all right there, visible. It's fun, it's simply, it is simply fun to use them this way. If you use a dice tower and you didn't find that moment that, uh, that you use fun, uh, and you try to tell me that, you're probably lying to my face and maybe even to yourself. Dice towers are fun. In this video, I'm gonna show you my humble collection of dice towers um, so that in case you are a gamer that already has everything and you still want something, maybe you have a little bit of an acquisition disorder such as I myself have. So in case you're planning to uh, purchase a, a dice tower, in my video you will see some options, different models, different takes on the basic idea of the dice tower, uh, different ways of designing and creating a dice tower from different makers. So without further ado, let me show you some of my dice towers and I hope that you can maybe find some interesting ideas here. We will start by taking a look at two towers that I own by the uh, Polish maker E-Raptor. They make several models of towers and they make some really big towers. The two of them that I have are indeed of the big variety. These two towers are huge. One of them is in the shape of a sort of cathedral, castle. The other one, really cool, is a dragon. And again, these towers are big, which means that they're not as easy to transport if you're trying to bring them to a game event, but they look pretty spectacular when they're on the table. There's no mistake uh, of where they are, there's no risk that you're going to misplace them during gameplay. They also have long trays with a bottom, which means that once you roll the dice, and the dice roll in, the dice are easy to recover and also you can move the tower around the table with the dice in it in case you only have one tower, a hey, one of this should be enough for a couple of people, we only have one tower so you want to pass it around uh, from player to player. They look just gorgeous. Uh, but I must say probably their big size is part of the overall aesthetic appeal. Let me show you how the dragon works. You feed the dice to the dragon and the dragon poops them, I guess. Now, they look gorgeous at first sight, but I have to say one thing. 
They are made of wood, uh, which is not a bad thing per se, but as you can see, unfortunately, the laser cut left some dark areas. And if you look carefully, you see how there is a sort of carving around that window, which really gives that window a nice appeal. It sort of frames the window. See how nice uh, this looks? Uh, these little decorations here. But you don't have them on the outside. How is this possible? Because I purposely built the tower with the inside, outside and vice versa. Why did I do so? Because yes, here you have the nice decoration which should go on the outside. You should be able to see that nice motif there. Unfortunately, I really do not like the burnt marks around the cuts. And if I put it on the outside, I would see the decoration, but then I would also have all of these dark brown areas all around, which I really don't like much. So once I, I took it out of the box and I saw uh, how it was done, I was faced with the choice to see the nice decorations and the burning marks or no nice decorations but more of an homogeneous color homogeneous look and i went for that look something similar also happens with the dragon but the dragon um, as you can see i built it uh, the marks the burn marks bother me a little bit less somehow they also i feel less visible then it's a dragon if it kind of looks like there's being fire around it, then it's not as bad. But as you can see, it's definitely visible here. Most gamers probably will want to paint their own dice towers. I think this will look gorgeous after you paint it, but as these towers come out of the box, at least this one, uh, probably uh, there is that uh, that factor there. It will not be a problem for many players if they want to paint it But for somebody like me who does not like to paint components Then I had to assemble it that way or to live with the, the burning as with the burning Details pretty visible which by the way is still pretty visible still just a little bit less this way These are the towers that I own by Blue Panther LLC they do not have a large catalog looking at their website and interesting enough uh, my favorite products from them which are these two towers are not on catalog I guess maybe they are out of stock they don't make them anymore looking at the catalog what they produce now in terms of towers is this one here called the knockdown value tower and then towers that do not have special decorations but uh, they mainly are distinguished by the finish. There is the stone finish, the cherry finish, the birch finish. So pretty much the color and the pattern, but they do not have specific decorations. However, they make what is possibly the uh, best value on the market in terms of dice towers. If you're looking for a dice tower just because you think you need one, and it's debatable that anybody actually really needs one. If you need one, or you want one, you don't want to spend much money, then this is good value for the money. It's 10 bucks, it is a solid, reliable, sturdy dice tower. Also, the fact that it has no decoration whatsoever, it's a no-nonsense, minimalistic dice tower. It gets the job of a dice tower done without thrills and without whistles and bells. The advantage, however, is that, of course, you can then choose to decorate it yourself. So if you're creative, you want to try your hand uh, making your dice tower unique and crazy, this is one way to go with the, with the value dice tower by Black Panther. Then they have these two towers, or I should say they had these two towers. I simply found them on Amazon, on eBay. It's from them, or at least there is their name on the uh, on the Ziploc bag in which these two towers came. So I assume that they made them some time ago, and these are quite nice. I like them better than the standard one, of course. And frankly, since they are old models that you can find floating around from individual sellers, they're not much more expensive than this one. This one is steampunk themed. Oh, you can see the. The steampunk elements here. I don't like very much that there is this writing here in front 
but I couldn't put this in that direction because there is no decoration here that will be worse so I think I can live with some writing there I really like this illustration here vaguely disturbing eerie this is nice steampunk art and each side as you can see is different and another tower is themed after World War II infantry again this one each side is different this may not be for everybody because there's so much intensity it's not like actual decorations They're actually people fighting and screaming and looking in the in the heat of combat, taken in the heat of combat, there's an intensity to these illustrations. Definitely very expressionist, expressionistic, not strictly realistic color palette, which however gives you the sense of the intensity of the fight going on. These are not really realistic illustrations unless these people are fighting as they are burning alive. I see that as a visualization of the intensity of their will to fight. It's cartoonish in a sense, but not in the sense of cartoonish, like childish. It's like a comic book for adults or for young adults, an adventure comic book. This is kind of the feel that this Dice Tower transmits to me. It's a little cartoonish, but I definitely like it. Dice Towers by Blue Panther LLC. As I mentioned earlier, there are also towers by Blue Panther, which are mm, finished, but not uh, in a figurative way, and this is one such tower. From Blue Panther, here is a stone tower, or better, a tower <laughs> with a stone finish that makes it look like an ancient or medieval type of tower. So this tower works very well with fantasy games, with uh, war games about uh, the Middle Ages, early modern. It looks nice, nice interlocking parts, a pretty solid once you put it together, really not likely uh, to fall apart as you use it and maybe move it around the table. Um, but still pretty easy to assemble and to disassemble. The pieces interlock solidly but then come in and come out uh, quite easily. Pretty nice product. Oh look, the parts inside also are decorated. And what is this? Well, this is the alternative to the dice tower. You don't like dice towers, but you still don't like to see your dice running around the table and knocking down components of your games. So then a good alternative could be the dice tray. It is what the name says. It is a tray which you use to toss the dice in. You roll them, shuffle them in your hand, and then you make them fall here. It's fairly tall. The edges are fairly... Uh, protective, which means even if you uh, toss them with a bit of a main toss, it is still not very likely that your dice will bounce back out. It may be, but in that case, just don't be so violent. Uh, it looks nice, it comes assembled already, which is good because it seems like it would be a little past my practical mental abilities to put this thing together. Uh, on the minus side, uh, of course, then you cannot disassemble it, you cannot take it down, which means it travels less easily than these towers, which you can break down and then you can pack flat. But it looks pretty nice, pretty, pretty simple design, and definitely I like the hexagonal shape, which is reminiscent of so many game designs, from war games to also regular, regular board games. If you have ever heard of a game called Settlers of Catan, then probably the hexagonal shape will not be completely unfamiliar to you. So, just an alternative, an alternative to the dice tower, the dice tray. Now we're gonna look at some dice towers from a major maker of game accessories, so Litko. I think it's pronounced Litko, not Litko. Could be wrong there, L-I-T-K-O. Uh, they make a lot of different dice towers, so they probably have the largest catalogs that I've seen. Some of their dice towers are translucent, such as this one, and blank, meaning you choose the color, but there are no particular decorations on them. Uh, they also have a version which is blank without decorations, uh, uh, but it's opaque, not translucent, and they have a vast catalog of uh, 
towers just like this one same model same general design just with different colors so, I have to say, when you assemble them, they look like they're a little fragile, they look like they're gonna fall apart because the front and the back hold together to the sides by these little joints here. And so it looks like, I think it's not very stable, but as far as I can tell, I never had a problem with any of these. It looks like they're always falling apart, it looks like every time that you pick one up, it will fall apart in your hands, but actually that hasn't happened. Litka also has a lot of towers with themes. Some of these are, I believe, mainly intended for wargamers because they have a military theme. This one, for example, which I like very much, is Napoleonic. What is peculiar about this one that I haven't seen about many other ones is that it combines plastic translucent components with wooden components. Usually it's either all one or the other. When it comes to the wood, you can see a little bit of the laser cut that you also have in other ones. But as you can see, in this case, you can put the uh, laser burns on the bottom and you don't see it much. Here, I turned this upside down, so actually here the back was sliding off. Uh, and they're pretty, th these uh, plastic elements are pretty smooth, so if you turn them upside down, they may indeed fall off. But if you're playing with the tower normally, regularly, that shouldn't be a problem. It can be an advantage if you're planning to take the... Hey, isn't that mean, the reflection? Hey, hi Marco! Um, I guess it could be a problem... Um, I don't know, if you want to throw the tower around? But if you are planning to disassemble the tower when you're transporting, then that would not be a problem. As for the decorations, here you have the Napoleonic themes. As you can see, the Age of Musket idea. Since we're talking about military towers, here we have another one with pretty much similar design in terms of the way in which the pieces interlock, but this one seems to be a little sturdier, at least the front. The back also slides off easily. But again, you don't really have to do this when you're playing with the tower. And this one is themed after World War II. It can work with a variety of World War II war games. Here we have the flag, Iwo Jima in the front. As you can see, military uh, motifs at the bottom. I think this one is mainly uh, thought for Axis and, and Allies players. So here we have the Axis symbols. So that's what we have on the other one side. The Allies symbols. And here we have the raising of the flag in Berlin at the end of World War II. These are really nice. This is probably one of my favorite ones, of my two favorite ones from Litko. The other favorite one, but also because I like the theme so much, is the Cthulhu themed one, which probably would be thematically appropriate for half of the games in your collection because they're just uh, a little bit of Cthulhu in so many games, not just in Arkham Horror. And here, clearly, uh, it will make you think of Arkham Horror when you see the seal. And this is it. It's, this one is in two colors, green and purple, with the translucent sides and the plastic opaque uh, slides inside. I think it forms a nice combination here. Lovecraftian symbols. The back is pretty plain with those two decorations, but not with a major, say, major illustration like you have here. And the other side here is symmetrical with this side. Keeping up with the horror theme, there is another tower bellico that I have, which in terms of interlocking design is more similar to this one. Again, you see you don't have these things that overlap on the sides. You have um, different type of interlocking, which again seems much more, uh, much less sturdy, but it is more sturdy in this one, uh, in this one it is sturdier than it is in that one. Because here actually the front and the back are applying pressure against the side, which keeps the two of them in position, uh, as opposed to there where the front is interlocking from the inside of the two lateral sides. 
The theme of this one is horror still, but this time we have werewolves. Again, like in other horror towers, uh, we have a balance between translucent and transparent and opaque. And I think here it works really well with the idea of, if you look at it like this, then you see the full moon and the yellow werewolf, uh, like the light of the moon is making it look yellow. Mm, doesn't make all that much sense, but actually kind of, I like it. Uh, I don't know. I like the idea of the golden werewolf. Mm. You have a werewolf or a wolf or a general big animal footprint here. And a pack of wolves running in the eerie mist in the wilderness on the two sides. And on the back, I think this is pretty cool with the scratches from the claws of the beast. So Litko definitely has a large uh, variety of themes. There are more military themes, more horror themes, but I believe most of the themes are around horror and military. Uh, they actually also have the official Settlers of Catan Dice Tower, but definitely Litko is a maker of Dice Towers that makes good products, they look good, they're easy to disassemble and to assemble. They look like they're not very sturdy, at least some of them, but in reality they are and they're very functional. Well, let's try one of them. It works! One minor thing is that the bottom here is empty, so if you're moving the tower around, then the dice will not go with it. On the other hand, some may see it as an advantage that if you want to retreat the dice, you can simply move the tower instead of having to put your hand in the tray, like it happens, for example, with this one. Pluses and minuses, I guess, but frankly to me, the pluses outnumber the minuses by a lot. I definitely like Litco products. And now, grand finale of my overview of my collection of dice towers. We're going to talk about a maker, a small company of towers that has quickly become my favorite maker of dice towers. Even though I only have three by this maker. This company is a small company called Troll Works. Like a troll, but not a lazy troll, a troll that works. Troll works. And I found about them completely by chance. I was on eBay browsing to see if there were dice towers and I saw that they had their eBay store. And I like what I saw, I like the towers that they had listed on eBay. I also then found that they have a Facebook page where they showcase their products. Trollworks is a small company that designs their own towers and also they do custom work. First I'm going to show you some of the things that they make regularly and then I'll show you a dice tower that they customize for me. They just made it for me. I'm the only one who has it. Nee, 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 nee. Now come on, let's be serious. They have many dice towers that are themed after military themes. They have this sort of metallic look with then symbols of famous military units on them. There are Russian units. It's most of their towers, the ones with military themes, are themed after World War II. Uh, by the way, that is also the most gamed subject in world gaming, so that kind of makes sense. You have one that they have on catalog regularly, which is themed after the 101st Airborne Division. And here you see the famous symbol, star here, and the symbol again, and the star here. So to see magical, back and front, side and side. The quality, well, the tower is pretty sturdy. The interlocking is also sturdy, this one. You can, if you want, toss it around the table. I wouldn't advise it because this is a cool tower. I would try to preserve it. But you could do that and probably the tower would not get apart. Even the inside, actually, you can see there is detail in there. It looks like it's part of a military vehicle. As you can see, thick material. Does it work as a nice tower? Yes! dice were rolled. The tray is not particularly big, but I'm also demonstrating with particularly big dice. Most dice that you'll probably be using in games will be smaller than these ones. And if you're not rolling a lot of them, then the tray that you have here is more than adequate. Also, it's kind of like slides out a little bit, so it makes it easier to pull out the dice by pulling them, by pushing them against the edge of the tower. 
Now this is their basic model, but they have another type of tower which I like immensely because they're foldable, these towers here, and you can open them like this or close them. This one is another one that they have on regular production, regular catalog. It is, it is um, themed after Game of Thrones. Look at this. Look at the beauty of the symbols of the houses in Game of Thrones. The tray is spacious and pretty long so that the tower can rest in it. So you can transport it easily without having to assemble it and disassemble it. You can simply close it like this. Now you may have noticed that there is a lid here. Of course, a lid makes it kind of hard to use it as a dice tower. So why is the lid there? Actually, there was no explanation when I uh, received this in the mail. But my assumption is that uh, then you can use the tower as a container to transport your dice. As you can see, the lid blocks them from there. Here, when the tower is folded, the opening is not large enough to let the to leave to allow the dice to fall out. And then, when you're ready to play, your dice are there. So the dice tower can work also as a container for dice. This is a model that I very much I like the making. I like the the workmanship on it. I like the general design. This is just one of my favorite dice towers. May just be the favorite that I own, but it's the second one because my favorite dice tower is the one that they designed for me. It is one themed after the Battle of Britain. Oh my! Uh, I like games about World War II. I'm fascinated, in particular, by the Battle of Britain. And all I told them, I didn't give them too many details. I didn't have to send them the design. All I said was, "Look, I like a, a tower." themed after the Battle of Britain, maybe, you know, with the symbols of the participants, of the forces that participated, designs of airplanes. That's all I said, that's all that I had to do, and then this is what I found in the mail. I found that even the lid has a nice touch to it. And here we have the designs of airplanes, definitely the symbols, so we have the BF-109 on one side, the Spitfire on the other. Look at this. Here we have the RAF. And look what we have here. Never was so much owed by so many to so few. And then for balance, there is also a quote here by Mr. Hitler. Again, what is impressive, I like this one very much, what is impressive is how little I had to do uh, for them to come up with a product which is so finished, so uh, well designed, so well conceived, with so much care and detail put into it. This, these are really people that know how to make things and how to design things. So as of now I'm really happy with Trollworks, a small company, maybe you didn't know before now, but I recommend having a look at their website, um, or at least at their eBay store, their, fa their page on Facebook. They really make nice stuff. Even if you're just picking up one of the basic towers, they have a ton of those with all sorts of symbols and uh, military units and nationalities from what we're to represent. Uh, fantasy ones, sci-fi ones, and if you don't find one that you like, they'll just make one after whatever theme it is that you like. So, impressive work. Oh yeah, and I was forgetting about this dude here, this meeple shaped dice tower. Probably was forgetting because I don't like it very much. I think Blue Panther produces these things after a search online. I found that. I, I assume, but their website doesn't say anything about it. Um, I picked it up at my friend the local game store. It was laying around. It had been there for a while. Nobody really knew how it ended up there and why it was there, what the price was. In horror movies that's usually bad, it's like, oh, there's the cursed item. But here there's nothing really cursed about a dice tower shaped like a meeple, if not maybe the fact that it is not a great dice tower. I'm gonna roll 3d6. And 
we are lucky we see two of the dice but we need to lift the tower to see the other result in many cases you're not even that lucky and, and sometimes it happens some of the dice will go pretty far from the tower and some will stay sitting at the bottom and you have to move the tower. I think that was the third die that actually went the other direction. So extremely annoying. One of the reasons why you want to have a dice tower is so the dice don't knock out components, don't knock down components. And here you're gonna have dice that will go where they are not supposed to and really far from the dice tower and some that simply sit at the bottom. So I had to move dice tower every time, the dice tower every time to see the result. Really, really not well designed, not practical at all for gaming purposes. If you find a copy out there which is cheap and you want to buy it as a giant meeple, that I believe is the best use you can get out of this type of tower. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found something useful in the dice towers that I showed you. If nothing else, I hope that it was interesting and pleasant to you to see these products of human creativity and these products of love for board gaming. This is all for today, thank you for watching, ciao and happy gaming!